back up what I had to say? She gave me an A on it. I think it depends on the professor. I can't speak for Dr. Lanza. I certainly don't think that I'm indoctrinating my students and telling them that if you don't believe the way I believe, you're going to get an F. And I don't think that's what Dr. Lanza says either. Um, I know her. I don't know her very well. She may even be here tonight. I mean, the, the flyers were circulated um, in the biology department, certainly. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know how this really relates to me, per se. Uh, I, don't, I don't do that sort of thing. Certainly, I've flunked students before. Usually, the ones that don't come to class or they don't do the assignments, don't turn them in on time. You know, uh, I tell my students all the time, if you want to get an A in college, show up for class, do all your assignments on time. Um, you know, you don't have to agree with what I, agree, what I have to say. In fact, uh, uh, when I talk about evolution in my introductory physical anthropology classes, I say, look, you don't have to agree with what I'm saying. You have to learn it. I ask that you understand it. And that, I think, is the, the key to this whole question. If she is basically saying that, you know, I don't want to learn this stuff. In fact, I'm not going to answer what she wants me, me to answer. It doesn't have anything to do with Dr. Lanza demanding that she agree with her. This has to do with Dr. Lanza asking that she understand it and be able to tell, you know, tell me that you understand it. And that's the whole nature of the testing system. I don't care if you believe it or not, as long as you're able to tell me what it's all about. That's kind of what we're doing here tonight. You, know? uh, you may or may not go out of here believing it, but you know, you're going to know something about it. And if you didn't know something about it before, you do now. And I tell my students the same thing about creationism. If you didn't know a lot about it before tonight, you're going to know something about it when you leave here. Oh, here's the yes, sir. I would say that's an excellent answer, and I wish all teachers did what you do. Uh, believe me, there are some teachers in the universities that will fail a student if they don't, uh, if they don't believe what they want them to believe. It's not just understanding it, and I, I appreciate Dr. Hartman's answer. I would agree with him. Um, there are some, though, that don't, don't fall into that category. I think, I encourage students, if you're going to go to a secular university and the teacher asks a question like, how old is the earth? And you know the answer they want, because you read your book and you did your homework, but you don't believe it. All you need to do is write on the test, the textbook says, blah, 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 blah. However, this is not correct. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Uh, this question was asked, uh, four pages of prepared questions. Obviously, somebody uh, <clears throat> thought ahead about this one. Are there contradictions, or why are there three creation myths in the Old Testament? Just the phrasing of the question, why are there three creation myths, shows a little prejudice to begin with, I would say. <laughs> I would say there are not three creation myths. There is one creation story of how it actually happened. Uh, Basically, what they're usually referring to when they say this is the Genesis chapter 1 account, and I'll show you. I cover this very thoroughly on my videotape number 7. Let me get the mouse working here. Genesis chapter 1 says God made the plants, the herbs, the grass, etc., on the third day. He made the fowl, the birds, on the fifth day out of the water. And he made man the sixth day after he made the animals. So he made animals first and then man on day 6. That's the order of creation in chapter 1. When you look at chapter 2, it says, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and then it says he put him in the garden and made the trees to grow. And they'll say, see, the order is backwards. This is a different creation myth. This is the basic argument. They will say, in chapter 1, God made the grass plants trees on day 3, whereas in chapter 2, he made the trees after man on day 6. And this little chart kind of shows what the, the whole argument about this question about the creation myths. Here's what really happened. The Lord God made birds, he made the plants on day 3, then he made the um, birds out of the water on day five. On day six, he made the animals, and then he made man. And then he put man in the Garden of Eden. And then in front of Adam, he made the trees to grow. But it says it was the trees that were good for food. This is not all the trees. The rest of the world is already full of trees. He only made the trees in the garden, and he made one more of each of the animals so that Adam could name them and select a wife. If Adam had not seen God create something, Satan could come along and say, I did all this, and Adam would not know. The only, thing that did not, the only person that did not see anything get created was Eve, and that's the one Satan went to to trick. There's not a contradiction between chapter 1 and chapter 2. Chapter 2 is a continuation of the story, filling in the details of what happened on day 6. And it's not a creation myth, that's the way it really happened. Thank you. Okay, um, well this one puts me in an awkward position because I'm not here tonight to, to, to denigrate the Bible or to tell you that the Bible is not, not, not correct or that it has contradictions. 
but I think it does have some contradictions. Um, which I don't, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, lots of, of religions look at the Bible and they interpret it. They say, okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a set of parables, it's a set of morals, it shouldn't necessarily be taken literally, because if you take it literally, you run into some problems. For example, in Matthew 27, 5, Judas threw down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and then he went and hanged himself. But in Acts of the Apostles 1, 18, Judas kept the silver and purchased a field with it. He went into it, and falling headlong, he burst open, and all his bowels gushed out. He either didn't keep the silver, or he kept the silver. He either hanged himself, or he didn't hang himself. He died in a field being disemboweled. If you take it literally, then you have to believe both accounts, but obviously both accounts can't be correct, unless he hanged himself, fell out of the tree, hit the ground, and burst open. I, you know, um, I guess my, my point here is that um, you shouldn't necessarily take it literally. Uh, you know, I, for example, I don't have a problem with the Ten Commandments. Those are good rules to live by. You shouldn't kill somebody. You shouldn't lie about somebody. You shouldn't steal from somebody. Okay? Uh, you know, do I believe that they should be posted in the public schools? No, because they're not everybody's rules. And some people may have even more rules. Somebody, somebody may have 12 rules for good living, but somebody else doesn't agree with them. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to get into a, a necessarily a debate about the Bible. Uh, pick up your own Bible, whichever copy you prefer, the King James Version, one of the new standard editions, the Catholic Bible, whichever one you're comfortable with and happy with, that's the one you should go by. That's it. My, my microphone's there. Ooh, whoa. Technology is our friend. Uh, if evolution is true, why don't we have apes instead of babies? We do. Human beings. This gets to the question of whether or not humans are animals. Some creationists will tell you that we're not animals. We are animals. We eat, we sleep, we reproduce, we defecate, we do all those nasty things we don't like to talk about in public, but by golly, every one of us does them. If that doesn't make us animals, what does? Do we have dominion over the animals? Of course we do. We've got all the power. Um, give birth to an ape? Well, you can't do that. I've already talked about, you know, chimpanzees are the closest to us genetically, but there's a little problem with the chromosomes. I personally believe that we shared a common ancestor five million years ago with, with chimpanzees. Not that we evolved from chimpanzees, but that we had a common ancestor. The common ancestor probably had 48 chromosomes. And by the way, I'll, I'll point out something that Mr. Hovind said earlier about, um, um, let me see if I get this. Well, no, I, I think I'll save that for my closing remarks. Um, Chimpanzees have, have one extra set of chromosomes. We can't physically reproduce with chimpanzees. Um, oh, one thing I will point out is uh, if we're talking about kinds here, and we have to talk about relatedness, uh, chimpanzees, I said, were 98.2% similar to humans, but gorillas are about 94%, and orangutans are about 92%. Now, if they're all ape kind and they all have one common designer, then why aren't they all equally dissimilar? You see what I'm saying? Why, why aren't gorillas 98.2% genetically the same as we are? Why are they a little bit different? Because we understand that they evolved at a slightly different time period. Gorillas, in fact, uh, emerged a little bit earlier. Chimps and humans split about 5 million years ago. Uh, gorillas split off about 10 million years ago. Orangutans about 17 million years ago. The fossil record, by the way, agrees with that. We find the fossils in the correct stratigraphic profile, and the dates match up. We find the first orangutans emerging about 17 to 20 million years ago. The first gorillas show up about 10 to 15 million years ago. The first chimpanzees show up between about 5 and 8 million years ago. The first humans show up about 5 million years ago. Anytime you get two